just reaching for a piece of you. Hey everyone, welcome back. Tony Moore, and this is how you do it. So we've got our machine all put in, bench in, bolted down. I've adjusted the table so it's all level all over the place. It's all looking good. Um, now what we're going to do is I'm going to go step through now. Um, so actually just come around here, I'll show you this before I move on to the next bit. So I've just got a couple of routers up under here. So if you come right down and have a look under, you'll see how they're all bolted up in here. Um, this one's got a strap on it because you actually have to hold it and pull the tree at the same time. This one's got an on-off here. Um, so that's pretty much it. It's all good, ready to roll. So let's get to it. Today we're going to do this drum here. This is a Rogers 15 inch Tom, floor Tom, or actually it's a mounted Tom, which we're converting into a snob. Now we're up to the stage of this build. We've done a, a finished coat here, which is a poly, that's this product here, hand rubbed, no spray. We've just rubbed it on and I'm getting up towards the final coat. But before I want to do that, I want to cut my bearing edges. Now, a lot of Rogers guys like the um, little fleck all over the edges in here. I actually don't like it, I, have, I hate to say, and I know it's original, I still don't like it. So I'm actually going to cut it off and I'm going to give it a bit of a buff and put some of this on and I'll show you what that looks like. So how do we go from here? I've got this cutter here in my bench. That's my inner cutter. Now if you've got a laminated shell, something with laminate, a laminate on it, and you're going to cut against these, it's really important that you actually back cut. So what I mean by back cutting, is this so as this cutter is turning i've got arrows here actually already the cutter's turning this way now if the drum shell has a wrap on it and i'm pushing the shell this way what it's doing is it's taking material out chomp 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 and it tends to break out the back edge so rather than turning the shell this way against it you back cut it, which is turning it this way. That way, as it's cutting, it's cutting new material and it's supported as it's biting each piece out as it runs around the drum. I'll do a similar thing here. I don't know how good um, the shell is on this at first. So it's obviously a bit wobbly too. So you can, you can hear it's pretty out of um, true. So we've got, a, that one's not too bad that side. We've got a fair bit of work to do on this. All right, so uh, let's get into it. Let's cut uh, the outer edge first. I'm going to use this small trimmer here for the outer edge cut. Again, remember the cut is going this way. I'm actually going to cut in like this, around like this. And that way, as it's cutting, it's just going to protect the edge. Let's kick her up. I've already checked the height. Um, if you want to know how to do it, I'll tell, I'll tell you how to do it. You come down low here. See the shell here? I push this up against. You'll have to look very closely. I lift it up onto the bearing, the trace bearing, and then I adjust. I'll reset it for you. Okay, so we start like this. Just setting that. I'm lifting this up and I put it on the trace bearing. This is the trace bearing at the top right there. It rests on that and pulls down onto the cutter. Then I'm looking at the bottom of the table and I'm lowering the cutter. So which is lower? That's lower. <laughs> There we go, lowering the cutter so that it's sitting on the table. But I actually want a very small amount because I'm going to take off new material, but I don't want to take off much at all. That's pretty close to what I want for the first cut. Okay, so that's how you set it up. Let's get stuck into it. Turn this on. I don't have earplugs or earmuffs. I should do it, shouldn't I? But I won't. Yes, I will. Right there and look at the drum. All right, here's some. So as you can see here, it's just taking the very slightest little bit off just there. Um, now, one thing I forgot to tell you and to do, excuse me a second, while I jump over here. <laughs> Small old trick. Um, need to tape the edge up. 
Obviously, I don't want marks back on the shell here. Easiest way to do it is put it just flat, pull your tape around like this. Just resting it. Don't move the shell or it will wreck it. Just do a go with your fingers. Now, this is a 3M automotive tape. It will come back off, hopefully not without too much of the uh, the finish, but the finish was done, I don't know, six or so hours ago, so that's okay. Okay, that's all good. Back to the earmuffs. I'll do a full cut. So let's have a quick look, see what's going on here. So as you can see here, you come in nice and close. You can see it's cutting, it's not cutting, it's cutting, it's not cutting, it's cutting, not cutting, cutting, not cutting, all the way around. So what's actually happening there is when the original bearing edges were put on in factory with the laminate, the laminate was floating in and out. Okay, unfortunately, yes, it happens and that's what happened from the factory. So that's why now that we're on the raw shell, this is showing up. So to remedy that, what we're going to do is cut the inner one first. Now I've set the inside one up here exactly the same way. I'm going to boot that up and give that a hit. Just plug it in. So you can see on the inside the same thing is occurring as we're going around it's cutting in some spaces not in others you see around here now i'm doing what's called a skim a skim is just the minimum amount that i can take off um, to get the edges true again so we're going to adjust this cutter up a little bit And we're going to run the cutters again.
So as you can see, I'm chopping inside and out just to show you and get it quick. Um, you can see here we've got these spots where it's cutting on the outside, cutting on the outside, missing on the outside, cutting on the inside, cutting on, and missing. This is just a very poorly um, leveled or true drum shell. So let me show you exactly how to true a drum shell. Now I spoke before about how some companies, DW, Ludwig, even Gresh do this. They have a massive big disc on the wall with a, um, um, a piece of sandpaper on it. It's a big spinning disc. They grab their drum shell and they hold it there and they true it and they go, this is how we true the shell. It's got no bearing edges or anything. This is how we true it and they just push the drum against it. This is what happens when you actually use that method. And the reason is this, is because it's not actually true and flat. And also, you're using or cutting against this big whopping great flat edge that has no bearing edge. Another thing they do is they have a slab of sandpaper here and they'll put this shell down before to get it true before they cut their edges. And they'll cut it and spin it and spin it and spin it and spin it on this big thick edge. There's no need to do that. Let me show you a very easy way. I use a roll of sandpaper. You can use sheets if you like, whatever you prefer. You can mount it on a toilet roll if you want and roll it out. I just put a sheet of paper there like this. I've got a little thing here that's made up to roughly, you know, 30, 30 inches or whatever. I'm just gonna move it in there. I'll actually snap it up because I don't need that bit. Make sure it's pressed down. Keep looking at that, I'll grab some clamps. A few clamps here. As long as the paper's taunt or tight, whatever you want to call it, we're good to go. Okay, so at that stage, it's now flat. Now what I'm going to do is just turn in one direction. I'm actually going to go this way. I don't know why, just like that way. You will find if you're left or right-handed, there's a preference. So let's have a look here before I cut. We can see we've obviously got high spots, low. It's low wherever the old edge is. Low, 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 low. So I want to true this. I'm going to check first. I can see that it's wobbling this way. There's probably a high spot around here. Um, actually, there it is on that side there. So there's the high spot here. We're going to start there. I'm just going to move this drum and rotate it through here like this. Now I'm actually just trying to get a smooth, one solid, clean edge all the way around. Now we'll rotate the whole drum. I'm pushing squarely down. Have a look. So if you come in close, you can sort of see, if you trace my finger around here, you'll see that we've, it's nice. Then we've got a little dip in here. It's not too good. Then we pick up a bit there. It goes out again, goes out again. And then we're back to good again. So I'm just gonna get a small block plane to help out. Here it is. Just a small block, block plane. Now, don't plane where you've got low spots, lower the old edge high is the new edge. I'm actually just going to take a very small shaving off the high edge. Same over here. If you don't know how to use one of these, it's important that you keep it flat. It actually sits flat. If you tip too much, it'll go, it'll crank on either side. We want it roughly flat. That's pretty good. Give it a spin. Probably about just two revolutions. We're having another look just to check. All right, it's cutting through pretty good here. It's tracking, it's touching, a little bit more to come out of there, a little bit more with a low spot here. So we'll do one more shave, starting at our low spot. All right, let's check. It's already feeling heaps better. So, a couple of rounds. That's good. Now, because I've already lowered it, I should be able to take it over on the machines 
and just recut it. So I'll recut it. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll just do the one side for now. Get my earmuffs. I'll do them both at the same time. <laughs> We still got a couple of low spots just here and here, but we're almost got a full edge across the top now. So the benefit in trimming your edge and then trimming the shell is that all I'm ever sanding is one millimeter of, of timber instead of 10 or 12 millimeters thick, really thick. So a lot less effort. Now we're still missing here. This hasn't been cut at all through here off the old edge. So we'll check for true. So I'm more, more feel it at the moment than the light. I can feel there's a little rock still. Okay, but we'll get that right now. Um, the reason there's a rock is obviously we've got these couple of low spots here. So we're gonna work on the high spots now on the sandpaper by doing the revolutions. still it's still so this drum shell this particular shell was quite a lot out I'd probably say two to three mil it had some dips and, and bellies in it which is not good not good at all for a drum maker um, could be age um, absolutely but it's still not very good um, it will come up great though when I finish with it so I'll leave you there I'm going to go through and do the other side I'll come back when it's all done and show you what we've got up to cheers all right, guys, um, done both edges. Um, a fair bit had to actually come off on that other side. Um, if you come in nice and close. Now, one of the little trademarky things that I tend to do when I'm refinishing drums is I'm actually only looking to take the bare minimum off everything. So here there was, I've actually marked it on there, there was a big dish there. But what I've done is I've left a little tiny, it's just very small, little bit of the flake that's still there. On the other side here, it's a bit more prominent, right there. I just leave it so that when someone buys this drum a decade after me, they look at it and they'll go, oh, actually, it has been redone, but not much has been taken off. So they, it's a little bit of a sign or a symptom. Now, this is the cool part. I just wanted to show you this bit before we moved on. Um, for the criticism of this particular drum, Rogers made beautiful drums, and this is a great example of it. So to finish off what we're doing, we're going to put some sealer on it. Um, I've already checked it for true. Um, I've used my light. Um, it's a fairly telltale sign. Um, there's nothing there. It's perfect, actually. Now, once I've got it to this stage, I just do one gentle final turn, a full rotation, top and bottom, like that. Full rotation, like so. Um, I've already sanded the edges, but I use a bit of steel wool now just to bend this top lead edge, just ever so slightly over. So if, if you could feel that now, you'd go, ah, sharp. Oh, that's nice and smooth. So this is a very nice smooth edge and this is how you do it. Flip that again. Just be careful putting your drum down the other side. It doesn't need much pressure, just a little. Like so. Leaving the tape on already. I've got a fair bit of dust and crap here. Apologize for that. Um, believe it or not, this is actually in my garage right now because we're moving drums and we're doing all sorts of things. But um, I didn't want to not do it. So excuse all the mess and the cramped quarters. So we'll get this on. 
Now get in nice and close as we do this so you can see the grain lift out. Once again, we're using a Polytech. Another great product is one that's called um, Penetrol. In fact, I prefer Penetrol on the bearing edges than the Poly, but because I've used Poly on the shell, I'm actually just gonna use Poly all over. I wanna be careful not to get too much Poly on the inside here. So I'm not gonna put, the, this rag's already got a little bit of dampness on it from the, the stuff. All right, so maybe zoom in here, around here, nice and close. We're gonna go over this edge here and you'll sort of see what it does. Now look at the colors just come out beautifully. So we're just gonna run that around there. Needs a few, a few coats to seal it up. Um, and this will be good for another 100 years once this is all sealed. As I said, the Penetrol product um, is just such a good product for sealing timber on bearing edges. So when I do, um, when I recut all my edges or set up a drum set for recording, I do exactly this process, minimal cut. I don't care if it's a brand new whatever drum set, I will still recut them. I'll make sure that they're perfect. I'll skim them exactly how I've done them. If there's dints, and often there are dints even in new drums, um, I'll epoxy fill them, whatever I need to. I don't want to take too much material off. The whole point is creating a musical instrument that's going to sound great. So I will um, recut it and then I'll seal it up with Penetrol. Once it's sealed, I'll give it a light steel wool sand, second coat, another coat of Penetrol, then I'll give it a light steel wool. The final thing I do before assembly or heads back on is I buff wax into it. Now we'll come back to this. Um, once this dries, I'll give it a steel wool. Then I'm going to do the whole shell, its final coat. Because remember, I actually haven't given this its final coat yet. So I'll just do this edge here. So when I give that the final coat, um, this whole drum's beautifully sealed and all ready for our black satin hardware, which hopefully, if I actually get it to the powder coaters tomorrow maybe, um, with a bunch of other stuff, we're doing a pearl rack at the moment that's powder coated black as well for a project. So. I just thought I'd hang tan a bit and um, went through a it all together. But as you can see, um, Rogers do make really lovely drums. Um, bearing edges come up a treat and some of the nicest sounding recording kits that I've ever restored have been these. Some of the worst are the 60s Ludwigs and no insult, I'm probably making lots of enemies right now. But I have to tell you, I've put 60s Ludwig's drum sets on the slab to restore the edges. And when the bass drum's sitting down like that, I can slide my fingers underneath it. It's that far out, which means I've got to take off almost half an inch off that bass drum to actually get it flat and true. Um, it's just, I, I've rarely found a good one. There are good ones out there, I have to admit, and I've heard some great ones. Some friends of mine have some really lovely sounding Ludwig kits. Um, they're just not my preference. So this Rogers, these sound amazing. If you could pick up any of these, um, are great sounding drums. All right, that's all for now. I'll finish this up. I'll give it a second coat. When you see me next, we'll put some hardware on and fit some snare mechanisms and see what it comes up like and what it sounds like. All the best.